Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Paul Zukunft, and uh, I oversee the response policy for the United States Coast Guard. And uh, for the last three days, I've been in direct contact with varying elements of the Coast Guard and also whole of government. Um, let me just lay out what the organizational structure is right now for the Coast Guard. We have a Homeland Security Task Force uh, commanded by Coast Guard Rear Admiral Steve Branham in Miami uh, that is working with uh, the interagencies in South Florida um, to address the evacuation of American citizens as well as coordinating the humanitarian and disaster recovery uh, within the devastated country of Haiti. Um, in Portsmouth, Virginia, uh, under the command of Vice Admiral Robert Papp, uh, he directs all of what I would call our main moving pieces, our cutters, our aircraft, uh, and within one hour of the uh, 7.0 magnitude earthquake, uh, we already had cutters moving to Port-au-Prince, uh, as well as C-130 aircraft from across the country, uh, as well as uh, eight uh, helicopters uh, being pushed towards the area. Uh, that very next morning, we, the Coast Guard, uh, medevaced uh, nine uh, severely injured people from a United States Embassy, uh, and we had two Coast Guard cutters uh, in Port-au-Prince Harbor, uh, providing an initial assessment. Uh, the challenge was uh, in a very, with the very fragile infrastructure of Haiti, uh, the main port of Port-au-Prince uh, was demolished, which is a uh, a significant logistics hub to move relief supplies. Uh, our assessment of the airport, uh, the tower was damaged and the airport was only open for daylight hours uh, with over the first 24 to 36 hours. Uh, Department of Defense brought in capabilities to now make that a 24 by 7 capable airport, but there's only one runway and an air ramp for a country of 9 million people. Uh, so the ability to move su relief supplies has been hampered uh, strictly by uh, the non-availability of a primary port and the limitations of the airport. Uh, as I speak today, uh, we have the USS Carl Vinson um, that has now moved into place. It has 19 large helicopters and a joint. Joint Task Force is being led by Lieutenant General Keene, uh, who is on the ground in Haiti, um, you know, providing better situational awareness and then to coordinate the movement of forces. In terms of responsibilities, our role as the United States Coast Guard and within the Department of Homeland Security is to support the U.S. AID mission. Um, and then also to support the UN Special Envoy in Haiti as well. Uh, so we're all supporting that mission, and that comes from DOD as well. Uh, and certainly we're bringing all the resources that we can bring to bear in the United States. Um, when I just look at the sheer number of ships that will arrive, uh, both Navy and Coast Guard, uh, over the next 96 to 120 hours, uh, that adds up to over, over 10,000 sailors, Marine Coast Guardsmen, uh, soldiers. Um, so it's a significant lift on the part of the United States. And I don't want to dismiss the contributions of the international community as well. Uh, and, and this has really been not just a whole of U.S. government, but certainly this has been a global response to a very catastrophic incident. Um, our estimate right now is that three million people were directly affected uh, by this earthquake uh, in a country that uh, typically does not have reliable running water, um, poverty. It's one of the poorest countries, certainly in our hemisphere and in the world as well. Uh, so we are very sensitive to the timeliness of first bringing in uh, urban search and rescue teams uh, for saving lives, and that is our number one priority right now is to get those teams on the ground. Uh, we have four urban search and rescue teams uh, from Miami-Dade County, Miami, uh, from Fairfax County here in Virginia, and also from L.A. Uh, and these are with uh, canine teams uh, in going into rubble to extract uh, victims of this earthquake. 
Uh, behind that, we're also looking at uh, we have over 40,000 American citizens that that reside in Haiti, and certainly we are attentive to their needs. Uh, but primarily uh, at this point is to get human relief, disaster response supplies into the country. That's food, water, medical supplies, uh, as well as physicians as well. Um, the patient to doctor ratio in Haiti is very low. Uh, very few physicians. Uh, they are very capable, but certainly limited, and they've been directly impacted, as has the main hospital in Haiti as well. Uh, so that's a rundown of, of where we are. And uh, with that, I would like to open up what time we have to questions uh, from you. Thank you. I'm Julio Marenco with La Prensa Gráfica of El Salvador. Um, do you have an idea of how many missions have you conducted so far? Uh, and by you, I mean the whole of force uh, uh, there in, in Port-au-Prince and how many people you have, you may have helped to okay. date. Um, we don't have those precise numbers. Uh, we've, um, within the first 24 hours, we evacuated uh, 284 uh, U.S. citizens, uh, some of these with severe injuries, um, and we also conducted 19 life-critical medical evacuations. Uh, there are teams that are out in Port-au-Prince right now uh, distributing relief supplies um, at the same time. Uh, the, the, the casualties are literally overwhelming. Uh, these, these are now 24 by 7 operations in terms of flights, movement of people, movement of supplies, um, but to actually give you an exact number. Um, I, I will say, though, that the, the number of people providing immediate relief has gone up exponentially over the last 24 hours. Um, you know, it, the big challenge were getting people into country and then getting them out to the affected area. If I, if I can have a follow-up, I would like to know about the coordination with the Haitian uh, military. How are you handling with them? Because uh, in the past uh, 36 hours, uh, the Haitian government has seems to be like uh, kind of uh, inoperable. Yeah. Um, the, the chief of the Haitian National Police uh, did survive. Um, we, are, we have been informed that approximately 5,000 Haitian National Police officers um, survived the earthquake. I don't know what the total number was before that, um, but clearly they are dealing with tragedy within their immediate households. Uh, the UN mission called MINUSTA to support stability in Haiti, um, you know, one of their key leaders was killed in a building collapse along with over 100 to 150 others. Um, but that team is now reconstituting, um, and, and that will be part of the long-term transition. Uh, that was the situation in Haiti before this earthquake, uh, where MINUSTA was supporting the internal stability of Haiti, uh, and at some point we would look to return to that. But clearly with the devastation uh, and, and just the breakdown of infrastructure, that may take some time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Shin Shouji from NHK Japan TV. Uh, given the uh, there are Coast Guard people in Guantanamo Bay, can you elaborate about what are those people in, involved in their role of you know this relief effort? Okay. Um, yeah, our people in Guantanamo are, are there to provide port security uh, for the detention facility in Guantanamo, so they have not been involved in this relief effort. Um, the Coast Guard uh, personnel, the, uh, the airplanes, the Coast Guard cutters, uh, those have come from as far away as Sacramento, California. Um, but the preponderance of, of those resources came from uh, the southeast Florida region. Um, the Coast Guard routinely patrols these waters, primarily for counter-drug activity, uh, but we can easily shift uh, to a more life-threatening situation such as we have here in Haiti. So uh, this was uh, a shift in emphasis from one mission to now saving of human life. Uh, yeah, speaking of uh, Guantanamo, uh, in the first uh, 24 hours, I understand a lot of uh, uh, injured people were uh, being airlifted to Guantanamo to get uh, medical assistance. Is that still going on? Are you... 
uh, and it was also discussed uh, the idea of using Guantanamo as uh, as a main uh, base uh, for especially the most critically injured. Is that still going on? Uh, no, we uh, airlifted uh, about five American citizens to the Naval Hospital at Guantanamo. Um, we have since been taking those, you know, the critically injured uh, either to the Dominican Republic or back into the United States. Um, so at this point, we are not uh, relying upon the Naval Hospital. The USS Comfort, um, a hospital ship that can treat up to 1,000 patients, uh, is, is leaving Baltimore uh, as I speak. Uh, and that will arrive on scene on the 20th of January um, with a full complement of medical treatment specialists. Are you, are you aware of any patients being airlifted somewhere? Uh, uh, yeah, we, we have not airlifted uh, any Haitian um, uh, uh, injured or wounded. Uh, now, a number of them have crossed into the Dominican Republic. Um, and I understand that the hospitals along the border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic have been overwhelmed um, by those that are somewhat ambulatory seeking medical care. Um, and the, the treatment facilities within Haiti, certainly they are overwhelmed. Are there any other questions? If not, then this event is uh, now concluded. Thank you all for coming. Okay. Thank you, Thank you sir.